happy uh new uh, <clears throat> kind of wrapping up this current training period building into starting the next uh is it our four i think our fourth training period will be starting up pretty soon here um so yeah this last period we were uh you know we added some kind of adding ski specificity into into the training program um looking at you know from an from an annual um perspective so we're always trying to look at the big picture and see what what we're doing and why we're doing it at certain times of the year. Um, so, you know, the summer is just really about building that base. And, um, you know, with that, we do want to have, um, you know, a lot of broad training, general training, um, you know, with things like running and then getting out on biking. And then, you know, with this, now we're trying to get a little bit more ski specific while still working on that base. So last period we added in, um, um, like the roller ski or a time trial effort, which is, you know, um, ideally you do, it can be done on roller skis if possible. Um, and then we also added in um, like the fart, like training session and things like that, um, that just add a little bit more ski specificity. And we're trying to target um, building that base while also um, finding some ski specific intensity, um, just little, little uh, previews of what the winter will look like uh, for us, you know, once we're actually into the thick of it in the winter and you guys are racing. So just trying to give a little bit of that exposure to, to that type of, um, after those types of efforts. Um, going into um, the next period here. So we have, um, we're adding, you know, just even a little bit more, um, we're ramping up the intensity just a little bit. So we have a VO2 max specific session that we're adding in now. Um, so this is an interval set that's done. Um, it's very it's much so a kind of a maximal session um, where you're you're really trying to you know really kind of empty the tank a little bit. Not fully. You never want to fully empty the tank until you're racing, but um, but you know to really uh, try and try and dig a little bit deeper in your training and um, find those those pick those moments um, to to push yourself a, a little bit harder. So we're adding that in um, and we're continuing with with at having like a time trial in there um, or race effort, which is really important to continue to do. Um, on that, I would, I, I put in the notes, a, a note on this in the training, in the training peaks plan, but to actually um, see if you can maybe find one or two um, time trials that you like to do and actually go back and repeat those so that you can try and track progress and see changes um, throughout the year. So it's great, you know, if you go do, if you have a 10K time trial and you know, you did it in June, and then you go back and do it in late July and you're 30 seconds faster. That's a great thing. Um, it's good to, it's good to track those and see those, those changes throughout the year as you're continuing to um, add in some more intensity training and hopefully getting fitter and responding to the training well. So yeah, that's kind of what we're, what we're going for moving forward. So we're just adding in a little bit more intensity um, of that upper end intensity where we're really trying to help to start to develop that race engine a little bit. Um, when I say race engine, I kind of, you know, it kind of just means those, those gears you're going to be needing when you're out in the winter, um, and you are racing. So we want to have the, we do need to not over exhaust those through training, but we do need to prime them and get them a little bit ready for the racing, uh, season come winter time. So, you know, similar to, um, which is very similar to what we've been doing with team Berkey. Um, just as a little update with that, we, um, just finished the central, um, REG camp up here in Marquette, Michigan, which was a lot of fun. So the REG camp, um, the regional elite group camp is actually, it's a national level camp. And there, there, there's four of them that happen throughout the country over the summer. Um, and it's a huge development project from US ski and snowboard um, to, to bring the best juniors from each region together and to get them working with, at, with a national team coach uh, Brian Fish and to get them plugged into to what you know exposing them to what it looks like to to be making these steps um, so it was really fun team Berkey we were I, I was up there we had myself Matt Clark who's a, a coach for us another coach for us and also the, all the athletes were up there as well so it was a really fun experience and with that we did do three different time trials so we're also you know very similar to you guys adding in a little bit of those sprinkling in those race efforts um, and those harder efforts to try and get us ready for the winter even though it still is, you know, we're in the kind of the, the peak of the summer heat right now. We're still, uh, we're still getting ready for that. So yeah, we had three different time trials. We did, we did a uphill run test. Um, the first day of the camp or second, second day of the camp, um, which was about a 10 minute uphill run or eight minute uphill run test, um, which is a great way to, you know, uphill running is a good, is always a good um, fitness parameter and a kind of an indicator of 
ski fitness. Um, you know, it's, there's a heart heavy muscular load, but there's also that maximal, um, cardiovascular load as well with it being a time trial. So we did that. And then an uphill double pull test as well, which tests that same aerobically, you know, or cardiovascularly you're pushing yourself, but it also has ski specific strength and, uh, technique and skill required for that. And then the third one we did was the, was an agility test on skate roller skis. Um, this, you can actually look at the, this pretty easily. Um, there's videos on the CXC Facebook page of Zach Ketterson, a team Berkey athlete, and then Annabelle Needham, who, um, who is a skier at Michigan Tech and also um, skied at the U23 World Championships this past year. Um, she videos of both of them running through the, uh, the course, which was a really, if, if you want to see some, you know, some uh, prowess on skis, I would check those out for sure. Um, those are really fun to do those types of sessions, um, really challenging and really fun to just expose yourself to something a little bit uncomfortable on your skis. So that's kind of what we're up to, um, looking forward as well. You know, we're, we're working in, like I said, kind of the, the heat of, of the summer right now. Um, looking forward to a new training block. Um, we have some people going out to a camp in Vermont, uh, towards the end of the month with month which will be a lot of fun and looking for a lot of quality training and collaboration with other with other clubs and groups while we're out there um so yeah that's kind of where we're at um where we were last month where we are going into this month um and yeah i could run through some questions that we that were sent in ahead of time now um so there's just five questions here and if you have any um feel free to just ask or put them in the comments if you would like um so the first question is when one's aerobic base is not preset or long lot or it's it's long lost due to injuries or life, basically, can you recommend a late jump start strategy? Um, I think that this is, you know, I, I don't think that there's a magic, some magic thing you can do to to get fit quick. <laughs> um, skiing is a very skiing and endurance training in general is a very um long drawn out experience um and it's something that takes you know a lot of consistent effort and building over over a number of months years um to really build up that that kind of aerobic base so with that i would just recommend being um patient with that and know that um the biggest steps that will be made early on so when you when if we can if you can start to develop that sort of consistency with your training um, you will see significant improvements pretty early on when that base does start to develop and you're getting those physiological responses that, that, that your, that your body's looking for from doing this type of training. So be patient would be my answer, which I know is not necessarily the best answer or the one <laughs> that your people are always looking for, but yeah, be patient and just create some form of consistency, um, with your training. And, um, you know, if you really wanted to, you could, add in a little bit if you're you know your vault your overall volume is pretty low you could actually add in a little bit more intensity training if you're not pushing your training volume a lot because then um you're not going to be over you're not pushing you know the fatigue level quite as high with the volume so then you can add in a little bit more intensity here and there but be very cautious with that that would be maybe the the get fit quick idea but it's not really <laughs> it, it's pretty it's pretty common to just you know be patient and take your time there's a lot of top athletes who get injured or get sick or something for a period of months and feels like they start no they have to basically restart their, their training season and they always end up skiing fast come winter time on whether they have to restart their basically you know scratch the summer and they kind of have to start in the fall um, you know, that they always end up, people always end up skiing well in the come winter time. So just trust and believe in that as well. Um, question two. So suggestions for, um, after knee replacement surgeries with running or other ground pounding activities when those are, um, prohibited. So one thing I would really recommend, um, and we have, which is, we're having such great access to now is a skier. Um, there, you can always get your own. Um, or a lot of gyms now have ski erg concept too, or abilica ski ergs. Um, this is a really good way to get in ski specific training, um, with a very low impact. Um, it's basically you're simulate simulating double pull. It's very ski specific. You can also do single stick or specific strength work on that. Um, so, you know, sprinkling things like that in, um, if biking is good, I would just recommend finding those ulterior or uh, like alternative training modes, um, that, that are, that is not running because a lot of, um, there are a lot of skiers who can't handle a lot of running because of the, the, the heavy load that it has. So, you know, there's, 
you're trying to add in more things like biking, um, roller skiing as much as you can at that point, I would recommend. And then also, yeah, seeing if you can get access to a skier, um, because those are, that's a really great way to get in ski specific, um, both strength and endurance, um, training. And yeah, I would recommend that. Um, never, never try to go for, you know, uh, push yourself with running. If you know that, that it's not right for your body. Um, same goes with anything. If you have elbow tendonitis, don't try to push through a roller ski session. Um, if you know, so like just the same, um, be careful with those things and know that you have other training modes that, that you can use. And that's one, one thing that makes ski training super unique to a lot of other endurance sports is that we have so many, uh, different training modes that you can do, um, to ultimately ski fast that will help you ski fast in the winter. Um, so the third question is um, about strength and resili resiliency on uphills over the summer and into the fall. What type of strength and aerobic workouts uh, should I work on? So if you're looking at, you can look at uphill. So if you're, you know, something we're adding in, um, actually, I forgot to mention this, something we're adding in this, this period is uh, specific strength, classic specific strength. And um, this is a really, really good way to get strong uh, on uphills. So this is double pull only and single stick only, um, specific strength with classic skiing, and you can do kick double pull as well. And you're using, you're using the double pull and single stick um, techniques on grades where you pro that you probably wouldn't use in the winter because it's pretty steep. But what this does force you to do is it, it really teaches, it, it forces your body to build that strength um, and also it's a, there, there's a heavy, uh, aerobic or endurance co uh, component to it as well. So that's a great way to do that. Um, you know, as much I would seek out in, if, if you're running, whatever it is, I would seek out as much, um, as much elevation as you can, um, when you are running. So try to find elevation gain, whether it's long, gradual, consistent grades, or you're on more punchy terrain, um, you know, like a ski trails, much, they, they roll a lot more up and down, lots of up and down and undulating terrain, but I would just try to get comfortable and confident with, with working on, on, um, on terrain. Like, you know, if you struggle with it, I would address it directly and say, you know, if I'm bad, if, if uphills are something that I feel weak in come, come winter time, then I'm going to work, make sure I'm, I'm training, you know, seeking out elevation, um, gain throughout the summer with my training. And you can do that skiing, running, biking, um, really any way. And then you can also always go on a treadmill and hike the, hike the grade up pretty high <laughs> and maybe do a slight jog or run and maybe even do some intervals, um, running on the treadmill with at a higher grade, low speed. And that's a great way to build some strength and, and, uh, capacity in your, in your leg muscles. Um, the next question is what time period should be between AM and PM workouts? Uh, my golden rule has always been at least four hours between. So if you get done training at 10 in the morning, you shouldn't be out before two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, if you can do more time than that, I would, um, yeah, four hours minimum is what I would say. Um, you don't need 10 hours between, but you also shouldn't be only taking two hours because then your body's not really getting that reset and recovery like process fully started. If you're, if you're training, your sessions are really close together. Um, at that point, I would just, you know, if, if you don't, if it's not in your schedule to have build in that like four plus hours of recovery time, I would look at just doing one session then um, in the day if, if you need to. And yeah. yeah. Hey, is that, yeah. Is that even if uh, two sessions are completely different modes? Yeah. You know, it gets a little tricky. Like for example, if you have a run, a ski in the morning and then a run in the afternoon, um, or whatever it is, um, you know, ideally you can get out on both of those sessions, but if you, maybe if you have that two times in a week and maybe one, and you know, you can't get out for two sessions with that recovery time, make one of, make, make this the one session a little bit longer and do that one skiing and then do the next one later in the week running. So you're kind of, you're, you're trying to still train both modes, but you're not able to do it. Um, if you're, but it's okay. If you're not able to, like, you can train both modes, even if you can't get out two times in one day. Um, which I think is a good, a good way to do that. So you kind of pick your battles and make sure you're still finding, um, you're still training all the different modes. Um, yeah. So then the last, the last question is about, um, legs starting to hurt during the second half of second half of ski races. Um, done a lot of never cramped any time, other time in your life during ski training, triathlons, et cetera. Um, what are some suggestions to try and, um, help with improving that? So I think, Training wise, you know, you can obviously pinpoint things. The 
the stronger and more confident you are on your skis, the less likely you're going to cramp. So the more relaxation time you can find on your skis when you're out skiing um, and racing is going to be better. So really working on, I would look at it not so much in a fitness perspective, but actually a technical approach to that. Because if you can make each, each, if you're skating, if you can make each leg push 10% more relaxed and easier while skiing the same speed or faster, um, your legs, you're, you're going to have that build in that relax phase um, for your legs um, or your muscles in each, in each uh, cycle. So um, I would recommend trying to work on technique and finding, making sure when you're out training and skiing, you feel that, okay, I'm, I'm gliding on this leg and this other, and the leg I just pushed off of is now in a relax is, is relaxing. Um, and then it doesn't feel tense. That's going to help a lot with cramps, especially over a long period, like longer races, like the Berkey, um, because you know, you need, you, your, your, your muscles can't fire consistently for that long. There needs to be rest. You need to be able to get oxygen back into back into the um into those muscles and get rid of kind of the bad the bad air the carbon dioxide from 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 the muscles as well so without going too too into it with from a physiological perspective um so yeah that and then also making sure that you have fueling and hydration down during your races um i think that in skiing this gets overlooked a little bit because it tends to be cold so people don't <laughs> you know people don't think so much about their hydration and fueling during a race, a ski race, like maybe like they would maybe for a triathlon in the summer when it's really hot and you know, you're going to be, um, you know, you're going to be sweating a lot and you're going to need fluid replacement. Um, skiing, you still, your body, your, your body temperature still rises quite a bit. You're still sweating, even if you don't notice it, um, as much, and you're still burning a lot of calories. So you're using a lot of energy. So you need to find, you need to make sure that you're bringing that back in. So, you know, having electrolyte mix will help with cramping and also trying to find some sort of carbohydrate ingestion during during races whether it be from a gel or a bar or you have that in your water uh mix as well so yeah i would i would say it's kind of a two-pronged thing first technique work on that try to make it feel easy and relaxed secondly when you get to the races in the winter um make sure that you're feeling correctly and i would actually practice uh, ods or over distance workouts are a great way to practice fueling for for a ski marathon because if you're doing a ski marathon and you're out, you're racing for three hours and you're doing an over distance session and you're out skiing for three hours, the intensity is different, but you're still, you're still teaching your body how to feel over that amount of time. Um, so that's a really good thing to practice. And I would recommend starting that now and in the summer um, so that you, when you get to the winter, your body knows exactly what it wants and needs to get you through the race from a feeling perspective. What about starting current program, but going easy? Do you have any other recommendations? So yeah, I would start, um, I would recommend starting with the first two weeks of, from the April block. So the first two weeks of the training period, starting there because you do need a starting point and you don't necessarily want to just jump in, right? Because right now we are doing, you know, a fair amount of high intensity training and ski specificity. So I would, I would start with those two weeks. And then after that, I would, I would come up to what we, where we are now, but I would modify it down. Um, I wouldn't do the full load, um, or the full training session. So I would, you know, for distance stuff, maybe look at doing 75 to 80% of the recommended time. Um, and then for same thing for the interval sessions, and maybe, maybe you leave out right now, you leave out the maximal interval sessions and just work on the anaerobic, uh, threshold sessions mainly, or replace some of the VO2 max or time trials with, uh, the VO2 max sessions or time trials with anaerobic threshold sessions that you were, that, that we were doing in the first, uh, block. So yeah, kind of a mix of both, I would say, but I would start, start at the start and then kind of come up to speed with where we are, but also modify the, the duration and, and uh, intensity to make it a little bit easier. So you're not just jumping. Yeah. Making, like you said, making that big jump.